serve him, roll him. He's already been served. I served him. He's taking care of him. He's a little slow, but he got it. Testing, testing, testing. Roland Martin from Washington, D.C. Testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. Testing. We're having, we're having some uh, technical difficulties, as they say in the biz, with Roland Martin from Washington. Oh, is he in? Roland? Hey. Hey. Where are you, Roland? I'm in Atlanta. Oh, see, that's the problem. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought the signal got, the signal got caught in your, in your ass got. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Roland? Uh, good morning, good morning, folks. Uh, glad to be here, uh, here in Atlanta, uh, and uh, where Operation Hope is holding their Global Hope Forum. More than 4,000 people, uh, different delegates from all over the country, uh, are here dealing with the issue of finance. African Americans from all over the country uh, are here. And joining us right now is John Hope Bryant, of course, the founder of Operation Hope. John, how you doing? I'm doing well. I feel like I'm doing better than you, Roy. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to get my voice, uh, but uh, having so many great conversations here, so uh, still trying to trying to hold on to it. So, John, the folks who don't know, explain to them really what Operation Hope is and why this forum matters. By the way, he's, 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 he's like this. Everybody's all over rolling like a cheap suit. Janice Bryant, Howroyd, uh, Tom, uh, uh, Tom Brokaw. Everybody's trying to get a, a moment with Roland. That's why we. Yeah, I'm just I'm honored that we he even allows us a minute on the phone with him. Uh, we're we're we're, uh, we're we're got together a uh, largest meeting in the world for the empowerment of the poor here. And there's one statistic that sums all this up. We're talking about uh, police brutality. Uh, and we're talking about uh, injustices in our community. We're talking about racism, discrimination, uh, all of which matters. And Mr. Joyner, your, your work on HBCU campuses uh, is extraordinary. All that's incredibly important. There's one number that we ignore. 44%, half, basically, of all black people have a credit score below 620. You can be the nicest person on the planet. You can go to church every Sunday. You can be you can be you can be God fearing, gracious. You can't get a small business loan. Nobody knows this. At, at six twenty credit score or below, I don't care how nice and kind and re- reasonable you are. No bank can give you a loan to start your small business dream. You can't get a decent home loan. You you can't get a decent loan at all. If you have a five eighty credit score. You can get an auto loan, which is basically a driving bomb because it's 18% interest is going to explode on you. If you're driving around in a Mercedes with an 18% auto loan, it's a Mercedes payments, not a Mercedes. So, <laughs> Good one, John. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Say it again. It's a Mercedes. <laughs> It's not a Mercedes, it's a Mercedes payments. <laughs> Mercedes but, payments. <laughs> but the point, the point, the point is, so you got one person driving down the street in the car, you know, a Mercedes with a 1.99 interest rate. That's me. You got somebody else profiling, driving right next to him with an 18% interest rate. That car is going to explode. It, it, is, it is a driving bomb. You literally can out, cannot outrun it. This is not the exception in our community. This is the rule. And so those who get, who have the, le- the, mo- the least pay the most. And, and for lack of knowledge, we die. It's what we don't know that we don't know that's killing us, but we think we know. So half of employers will check your credit before they'll hire you. Uh, no bank will, will give you a loan to, to pursue your dreams and if you can't your, get your credit score up. It, it's not about the credit score. It's about the trending indicator of your economic energy, your confidence, your, your ability to, to, to keep your obligations, et cetera, et cetera. I'll tell you one last thing. There's never been a riot in a 700 credit score neighborhood in America's history. Folks with 700 credit score just, just want to go shopping. So, John, with the folks who are here, um, banks and others, what do folks do when they leave? I mean, how does this, this conference impact the very folks uh, who you're describing? Where everybody else needs to go meet, you know, follow up with the conduct that they made. You need to go get a throat lozenge, uh, Roland. You, I got you, it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but uh, if you keep talking, about, that ain't gonna help. <laughs> <laughs> this is our relationship. Actually, we really, we really honored to have Roland here and, and Mr. Joyner. You're on the phone giving attention to this because without the media, uh, you don't have a movement. This is the new civil rights movement. Civil rights was waged and won in the streets. Civil rights will be waged and won in the suites. 
That was about race and the color line. This is about class and poverty. And whether you're white, black, red, brown, or yellow, you definitely want to see some more green, as in U.S. currency. We're all in this mess together. We're fighting the wrong battles over the wrong things. We shouldn't even be fighting. We should have leave this, this meeting today, the largest meeting in the world, not focusing on uh, surviving skills, because black folks basically become experts in surviving. After 250, 300 years of slavery, 100 years of Jim Crow that ended in 1970, not 1870, we are, we are experts at what we are against, and we're experts at surviving, and, and, and we know what victim looks like. But we are experts at surviving in a world hooked on thriving. We've got to now upgrade our skills. This meeting is about upgrading your software, your mental software to compete in a world where you're relevant. We've got to get our credit scores up. We've got to become homeowners, entrepreneurs, small business owners. And if you don't know what an entrepreneur is, that, that, let's start with that being the problem. <laughs> We've got to become philanthropists. You don't know what that is. Look at what Tom Joyner is doing on college campuses. And you, you make the money so that you can then give it away. People say, well, you know, I want to just be a socialist. Even if you want to distribute money, money like a socialist, you've got to first collect money like a capitalist. So, so we have got to get a new mentality. Stop saying we hate rich people. No, you don't. You hate rich people until you become rich. <laughs> so, so we need a wealth mentality. We, just, we need, we need to, to have a purpose in our life. It's not about money, but about building wealth in our brain and our knowledge because capital, the word capital comes from the Latin root word capitas, which is knowledge in the head. We've got billionaires here, Tom. Sitting next, sitting next to multi-millionaires, sitting next to thousandaires, next to somebody, sitting next to somebody trying to buy some air. <laughs> but all of these people uh, have dignity and have an interest in driving uh, their own aspirations forward and making this country better. And, and, and if you have a chance to sit next to Janice Bryan Howard, who runs a $3 billion company, a black woman, or the guy who you here yesterday who owns Sotheby's and also owns GM, who's a billionaire, and, 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 and that person look at you and say, you know what, we can do business together. As you know, Tom, uh, that's how business works. Mm-hmm. That, it's relationship capital. But I, here's what else I know. If you hang around nine broke people, you'll be the tenth. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. Is this your first year doing this conference, John? No, we've been we've been knocking this out the park for several years. We've just been under the radar screen, just getting the you know just getting the technology right. You know, just getting you know you can't do this half half cocked. You got to do it straight. You got to do it right. There can be no butts next to your name if you're the sponsor. So we've been at this for 25 years. We've been doing this conference in a big way like this here in Atlanta for about four years. Uh, but this one this year is absolutely uh, the biggest in the world. It is it is historic. Uh, and we have the CEO of Delta. We've got Tom Brokaw. We've got Reverend Al Sharpton, Reverend Jesse Jackson, Ambassador Andrew Young, the Vice Chairman of the Federal Reserve. Literally, literally under one roof. The most conservative folks and the most liberal people. And we're green. We're well, congratulations, green, man. And for people who can't get there today, can they get... at t Yep. What was your second question, young lady? I was asking for people who can't get there for the conference this week about your books. They can obviously pick up a copy of uh, any one of your books and get yeah, started. Yeah, get the memo. With this. Well, yeah, yeah. Don't don't go short up today. Do please. Yeah, just watch it online. But but get the memo. The the memo is everything the world ever taught you about how money, power, money, and wealth really works. Get the memo. John Ho yeah. Bryan. All right. And uh, yeah. Tom. Um, on my Facebook page and John's. Take care, Roland. 